Holy cow, don't turn that dial. It's Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Explosion over there. Explosion over there. Explosion over here. Happy Make Monday. Uh, Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's Happy Monday, my dude. What's going on? Today we have a very special guest. I'm very mm. excited. Our Sola Studios own and one of the only uh, artists that we actually like represent here at the studio, David Vega. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys. Thanks thank for you inviting for inviting me. Here. Yeah, of course. We'd love to have you. Dave, why don't you tell people what you do? What you, what's your bag? What's your deal? Well, I'm a photographer. I'm pretty much a documentary photographer. Mm -hmm. I photographed the city since the 1980s to present times and I do events and anything that interests me. Nice. I also take photograph action figures, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of a thing. I've seen, I've seen some people doing that, you know, action figure photography is a thing. You get a, to kind of make your own little world, right? Yeah, if you do so well, they actually uh, provide you with the action figures. <laughs> and they will pay you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I wonder if those people sell them on that program called What Not. You know of what not? Not, not familiar with Basically, it. if if I mean I'm a little bit older, but remember QVC? Yeah. Oh, people okay. were they selling swords and telescopes? Oh god, yeah. And lots of ugly watches, lots of uh, tiny knives. My dad is one of those people that buys those knives. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that knife. Look at that stag horn. Look at that. That's beautiful. Gotta I, have. I'm like that now with uh Amazon buying the action figures and the clothes and outfit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I actually... Like would, clothes for the action figures? It's just, Yeah, I'm a 65-year-old man playing <laughs> with toys. But at my, age, at my age, I don't care. Yeah. And uh, what happened was is that um, these action figures, especially the Batman, they cost about $300, $400. It's just yeah. crazy. Collectors. So I, yeah, so I found out that on Amazon, you could buy like knockoff heads of the figures of the actors of oh, the yeah. characters so i did that i ordered the body and then i buy my own knockoffs suits. getting yeah. bootlegs get bootlegs and and it just as good okay i'm totally telling on myself and i like probably shouldn't I'm, speak no about shame. this publicly but i have bootleg action figures too because i um was on i was on um uh, uh what is it called aliexpress you know aliexpress it's like I got, alibaba I'm, I'm on it too yeah aliexpress is where you go for bootlegs guys if you want crappy bootlegs excellent but i was getting what was i getting um i've been playing genshin impact for a couple of years and i was a big fan of it so i wanted like a little action figure and they had these genshin impact action figures that were super cheap and it's just a little statue and while i was buying this statue of this video game it was selling me it was showing me like the most obscene like hentai action figures i've like ever seen like like a like a little toy of like a girl getting uh making love with a dog or like <laughs> peeing you know it's like it was really it was like it was totally crazy like just pee flying out or whatever and i'm like what the hell is this <laughs> And I was like, so I was, of course I added it to my cart immediately and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and then that started like a collection of me trying to get like the most obscene of these. Uh, so that's figures that the exist. collection you told me that your wife hates. Yeah, totally. Oh. Of course, my wife hates it. I mean, she calls them her sister wives, but it's a collection of like the most obscene. Uh, the, all of those things, though, they're all bootlegs, right? So they're made by companies like Japan. You know, they're made from Japanese companies, and these are like Chinese bootlegs. And if I my collection of like, I have like 12 of them maybe because they make a lot of these. And if I had real ones that were not bootleg, the collection would be worth over $8,000 because they're like, they're like four to $600 wow. a pop for these things. I play with toys too. I know. Also, my dad believes in mermaids. <laughs> Craig <laughs> Lappin believes in mermaids. Craig Lappin believes in mermaids. Craig Lappin but, believes um, in mermaids. Your father must have grew up watching Voice at the bottom of the, of the sea and stuff like that. Lost in space, the old man. Yeah. Oh, well, he was Definitely. in the Navy. He was in the oh, Navy. Oh, he, so he saw mermaids in the Navy, huh? I, that's, uh, he probably did. I mean, he told me that back in the day, you know, they have a saying, send a salami to your boy in the army. Yes, right? cats is deadly. Well, I don't know how they receive mail on the the, the ship. Like, I guess, how, how does that happen? Do you helicopter. Know helicopter. Yeah, yeah by helicopter. Oh, yeah. Other ships come by and hook it up with a yeah. cord. And it's fucking crazy. So he told yeah. me back in the day, you know, people would send salamis. And by the time the salamis would get to them, they'd be, they'd have mold on it oh. and shit. He said that back in the day, there were guys on a boat that would love getting the moldy salamis because they would eat them to get fucked up. 
Oh, Yikes. Like they would eat the too. mold to get tweaked. Oh, that's fucked up. From man. the meats. That's like the Russian, um, you know, they have they ration vodka. And if they don't get enough vodka, they will um, like put cologne in a frozen <sighs> pipe and get all of the uh, alcohol out of it to freeze out everything that's not cologne. Or they will have oh. a shot of uh, airplane antifreeze. Oh, and you can only do one of those a week. Otherwise, you'll go blind. I saw a documentary about the <clears throat> uh, nuclear sub submarines. And supposedly these guys will stay within the sun for at least three to six months yeah they don't see daylight yeah except for officers and stuff like that but that's wild that's wild well speaking back of the day you're a native new yorker yes and you've been here your whole life and living in like lower east side the entire time or yep uh, alphabet street lower east side i'm a neo i am a neo rican and i'm proud of it yeah and uh yeah for for our uh, midwest viewers what's the new york uh a puerto rican who was born in new york (laughs) why why is the identity so separate and strong like why is it a thing uh it's because your 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 piece of of the mainland especially new york city and your whole attitude is different than those on the island yeah um each time like i say each time i go to the island they correct my spanish (laughs) (laughs) because i I use terms that just they don't understand Mm, like dead ass (laughs) <laughs> well, like a like a hot dog, you know. Yeah. Like what do you call a hot dog? In Puerto Rican, we call it panfura. Ah, oh, panfura. Like Frankfurt, but we say panfura. I like that. Now, if you go to Puerto Rico, they say, "What the hell are you talking about?" Yeah. And then my grandma. What would they say in Puerto Rico though? Pejo caliente. Oh, that is a big difference. That is a big difference. Is it also like a difference culturally? Where like you know. Because you're from New York, you go down there and you're like, come on, guys, we got to go. Like, you know, yes, you're late, yes. you're late. The, the island's very relaxed. They, they close early, they, they chill, they have the little siestas, especially yeah. in small towns where the, the stores close for at least an hour right. or so. Did you grow up going back and forth or were you like mainly just in the Manhattan? I went back and forth a couple of times. Yeah. I, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, as a kid, you love it because you got the iguanas and spiders and chickens and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. As you get older, I mean, the. Uh, you have to plan it out. You want to go to a resort area where it has casinos and beaches. And if you find the right spot, you have a wonderful time. I'm sure. I'm sure. And you, you studied uh, photography here in the city? Or yes. You- I studied. I, I originally went to SBA in 1982. Shout out nice. to SBA. Again. SBA. Good school, right? Like- it is. It is. I, I hear a lot of issues about it today, but in my times, I really cared about the academics of the arts yeah i always heard that it was much more of like a, a trade school for the arts where they had people who were really working in those positions oh, that Mil- Mil- had like good connections and- milton gates yeah. was he was a famous uh, graphic artist my friend uh, mario was one of his students and he was big yeah at his time and uh so there was a great quality of uh, artists and uh instructors that to this day i, I still admire and, and uh, matter of fact was uh, jack potter and uh Sam Martin and uh, Naku Miller. He's yeah. my first paint instructor, and yeah. he really pushed me. Yeah, yeah, and you and you are a very good painter. I mean, a painter as well. Yeah, like, I should paint. You more. should paint a little more. I mean, everyone knows David. Uh, everyone who knows David knows David from his photography, like this one. Here, I'm going to show a few on the screen. This is an amazing shot of um, uh, Manic Panic. Back in the day, Thank this you. is 1984, right? And yeah, 84, 85. Yeah, 84, 85. That's when I was born. That's when I, was, <laughs> I, I was born, popped out at 85. But this thing, you know, this is the original Manic Panic shop that launched an entire brand uh, and was like a little hot topic down on uh, uh, St. Mark's for so long. I, and the thing I have to explain to people is that it was just a, a shop to pick up stuff, the hair dye for yeah. girls and punk and makeup, and yeah. women's you know, accessories plus clothes and all that. So, People tell me, how come you take more pictures of it? I said, it's like going to your drugstore. It wasn't. Yeah, a, you had no idea what it was going to no turn idea. into. No, I have yeah, no idea. Just, totally. Uh, it's, uh, so since then, I made a point to photograph things that I think in the long run would be some value, especially uh, music venues like yeah. Bowery. Uh, what's the Bowery? No, Bowery Ballroom? No, yeah, Bowery Ballroom. Electric? Bowery Electric. Remember when uh, Knitting Factory was still in the yeah in the yeah. Lower East Side? and they moved to Brooklyn. I think it was Lower. Leonard Street, and then and then they actually closed a few years ago in Bushwick or sorry oh, really? Williamsburg. They still have the one in L.A. I know it's like a bi coastal. Well, there's a Mercury Lounge, right? Mercury Lounge. Mercury Lounge, Mercury Lounge is still is around. Mercury yeah. Lounge has a weird. Have you ever tried to film in there? Do you they, know about it? Oh they, my God, dude, they're intense with it. They're so intense. They they try to shake you down for like hundreds of yeah, dollars. Yeah, they 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 don't want to use any film, any cameras or anything. No, if no you have flash. a camera, they'll like they'll they'll stop you recording on your iPhone. 
if you That's can. That's lame. Uh, but they, if you have a real camera, they make you like That's, pay. That's the issue I have about the music, music yeah. venue in New York City. They really hurt the musicians badly. They treat yeah. them like shit. <laughs> I remember playing Sidewalk Cafe, which was famous for launching Lady Gaga's career, right? Yeah. And uh, we were playing Sidewalk, and there was like no discussion about you know sound guy or anything or what was going to happen. And the sound guy, they gave us a sound guy that came with the venue, and we figured that was just kind of normal. Uh, and then he was nice enough and he did a good job. And but afterwards, he was like expecting us to pay him. And I was like, What don't you like work for the venue? Like, we're a band, we don't have any money. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, thank you, dude. But like, and he was pissed because we didn't have any money. Yeah, what him. pissed me off about the art world is that they treat artists like shit. Yeah, they, unless they could make money off of you, yeah, they don't see you. They, they yeah. would, Someone would pay $500 for a pair of shoes than pay $500 for a painting. Yeah, it's so, true. It's yeah. a valuing art is something that I find, you know, sometimes it takes the effort of making it to understand it fully. And the people that I know who will buy value art and will buy it uh, are a lot of times artists. A lot of work we sell it to other artists, myself, I collect. Uh, you know, I think usually you're either rich and bored or you're an artist and you love art. <laughs> and there's like the two reasons to collect art, right? Like there's not a lot of like middle middle class normal people. They they'll just go to IKEA and buy well, like well, a wall decoration. They don't they don't uh, yeah, care yeah. that much. But my, I mean it's weird. I mean there there are a lot of artists. So it is No, kind it's of not a just that. that it, no, happen. yeah, but at the same time it's it's like uh my example as a photographer, I do black and white printing. I develop, yeah. I develop the Silver film. Silver gelatin. Yes, develop the film, go to the dark room, I have a small dark room in, in my apartment and I Spend time developing these these images, and paper is not cheap. I mean, fifty sheets of 25, 25 sheets of eight by ten is about close to forty bucks, and I could run into a, a hundred sheet before I get at least two or three de decent prints. Right. They don't see that. Yeah. Even if I do digital photography, and uh, they expect, oh, it's digital. You can make another copy. It's not that. You don't understand. I go, I, I go out, take photographs. Yeah. I download the image. I take my time to select the image I want. Then I have to Photoshop them. That takes time. Yeah. And 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 they don't think that you, you don't plan. I used to walk out and I have an agenda. I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to this spot. Take this amount of photographs. Where you been? What's your local haunt now? Where are you at the most taking photos? Where are people going to run into you on the street? I'm trying to go back to uh, Ludlow and Orchard Street, but they have a lot more activities yeah. for bars and restaurants. But I prefer to do it at night because mm. I want to use natural, uh, no flash. I want to use natural mm. lights and cell phone lights and from the storefronts and all that. And and you have to be a little of, of a vo voyeur, so you don't want to disrupt people having dinner. You don't mm. you don't you don't want to have a, be on a date. You know, you come out, somebody. Go, has a camera, takes a picture of you, and think, what the hell? It must be my I don't know. Or... If I'm on a date and people start taking pictures of me, I just like, oh, well, right, so, I'm super well, famous. Well, know, well some of them have a good time. Some will go like this. Some will give you a finger. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I don't know. It's As a photographer, you have to feel comfortable with your environment. So you, what you, I suggest anyone who wants to do, do street photography, walk by the area you find interesting. Coney Island is different because it's expected that people will be taking photographs in Coney mm -hmm. Island. I there's, a, there's a place that's not so no no but, but you all. you don't take pictures of kids you know right. unless you get permission now that right uh, right it's on a little roller coaster right you take a shot but uh, I yeah just, that's a good way to end up in the precinct I, down there <laughs> yeah I try, I try to avoid that i try to avoid they send you know what happens when you break the law they send you to the freak show yeah <laughs> well, well, the per perfect example was that i was in comic con of all places yeah and and everybody's in cosplayers in their costumes and they're immediately willing to be photographed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always ask for permission first. Kind of yeah, after, picture. yeah, otherwise and they get mad. They say yes. Uh, yeah, sure. And they ask for information. I, I, I tell them, give me your Instagram account. I'll tag you and all that. So this girl was sitting down dressed as Scarlet Witch. She looked, she looked a little bummed out, but I asked her, can I take a picture? And she said, yeah. Then I asked her, can you stand over here? Because it's a better lighting and I want to see flex your, yeah. your cape. Next, you know, the father comes out yelling at me like I'm a pervert. Oh, know? yeah. Was she younger then, I guess? I have no idea. Yeah, you didn't know. Yeah. But, but also, she, she gave me permission. Right. So I wanted, I wanted to explain to him, listen, to get, he didn't want to hear it. He wanted my, uh, my card. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a card. So well, I, like, now we got your card. That's what I got them for. So I asked, I asked him, uh, 
I have an Instagram. I don't want to see Instagram. I got a list of people I photograph. I don't want to see that. So you already could tell his mindset was he right, had to stick yeah. up his ass. Well, that's know. a really that's an interesting thing about cons too that I think a lot of people. I've been now working at Comic Con uh, yeah. with a brand. I have called, to go next time you do. Yeah, I'm going to be there next uh, this October, Great. right? Uh, with Snarkfish T-shirts, friend of mine, Chris Barry Lake, who is also a streamer and a podcaster. So go check out that. But I. Uh, you know, I really learned from working at that booth, like the etiquette of asking to take pictures, be people's pictures with cosplay. Oh, you think that they're dressed up at cosplay at a convention that they would be like expected to just be photographed. But no, there is definitely etiquette to it. There's rules. To oh, it. no, no. You got to go up. You have to be like, can I take your photo? Here's my thing. There's an uh, entrance where you go to the main entrance. They, they, the photographers line up this so Everybody, as they come in, they immediately know they, they want to be photographed. Right. So if I see someone talking, I find it interesting. I walk towards them and say, I like the outfit. Can I take your picture? And 99% of the time, says, sure. Yeah, of course. Or they look at you saying, I like when they ask you, are you associated with a, a company? You're part of the, you know. Of, um, so, yeah, we're, I'm at Solar Studio. Yes, I'm, I have to choose, yeah. Or they tell you, you know, if you're part of a, um, of the event. Yeah. And, uh, and the Comic Con. And I say, uh, no. I man. work for Vega International. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, what, 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 one of my friends told me that when the guy told you, he, he asked me four times for my card. And he said, you shouldn't reach in your pocket. You want my card? Reach in my pocket and go like this to him. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but I knew the guy was kind of off because he's not listening. And, and I just let him rant for a while. So I got to a point, he want, he, he said, leave, leave. But I'm like, I'm not going to leave. He's like, I said, I used to do that look at him like he's crazy. Mm. So eventually he just, and I said, okay. I said to myself, I'm going to show you something. Show you a picture of his daughter. She's smiling. Yeah. yeah. I said, you want me to delete that? Yeah. He, he went like this, like twice. He went like this, go! And I left. Weird. <laughs> well, well, he, he, he was idiotic. He, you, you don't, you know, you gotta, when you do photography, speed photography, you got to stand, you're doing this with some crazy people. They got to stick up their ass. They think they're, Madame Monroe, whatever. We're, we're, I think we're also just living through a time right now where, like, social media has become so pervasive and, you know, a part of everyone's life so much that the rules about, like, underage people and your kids on the line Look, I understand are that. being defined. And, like, you have a lot of these influencers who, like, shove their kids in front of the camera and, like, use them to make money uh, and use well, them to get attention. There was just a attention. case where that woman that used to, I forgot her name, but had, like, this crazy... Uh, YouTube following about her kids, some something very religious, oh, and now yeah. they're going to jail. Yeah, yeah they yeah, yeah. stopped the kids and all that. Yeah, it's like abusing and them, they like were totally them. just very disturbing. Those poor kids. There's but, a lot uh, of that. Yeah. You, you see, unfortunately, you see that happen more than once. Where like uh, some family, if you ever like, I'm super sus uh, suspect of any like family channels because I there's been too many cases where like somebody you know oh they were like giving them ice baths and like duct taping them to the bed and like punishing them by Crazy. not feeding them if they don't. Why don't do you do that to me? Right. I want you to do that to me. I'll pay you. We do a photo shoot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for saying that so that people think I'm not <laughs> doing that already. Yeah. So Get back in the ice can't bath, wait for the Morgan. weekend. Get back. In Looking the ice forward bath. to the I weekend. <laughs> <laughs> ice baths. Yeah. What, what I would tell people, especially if you want to enjoy about photography and being in the art world is that you meet so many interesting people. I mean, yeah. the idea of me being here with you guys, I yeah. really didn't think about it. Until, so I go, okay, yeah. I'll do it. A sure. no brainer to me. No brainer. So I, I suggest anyone who's into the arts, it, it opens so much opportunity to meet people who are not from your background in the sense of the gender identification, their interests, their wealth. There's people who are very wealthy in the arts. They don't flaunt it. There's other people yeah. who are very poor but very talented. And you get to meet so many of these individuals to become friends and yeah. it's like your second family. I'm the I'm the very poor pretending to be very rich. One. Well, I admire you because you <laughs> you you just, you just show up in a bus, whatever. That's crazy. I'm, That's true. I did just show up to New York in a school bus. I can't do that. Yeah. I need I need road mats. I need I need some money. Well, I feel like people who are who raised here, um, like they the perspective of like going anywhere is so different. Because like you know you if you're raised in Manhattan. Where are you gonna like? You know, there's no, there's no going out of the small town. I'm gonna go strike out on my own. Like you're here already. Like you know, where are you gonna go? Tokyo? You're gonna yeah. go to Mexico City? Like you know, you, the, you're already in the epicenter, so there's nowhere for you to go to do something. You mentioned about me being, you know, you know, what's it do about being in Puerto Rico? Yeah, born in Puerto Rico, born in New York. I go to Irish pubs and get Guinness. You know, I, yeah. I enjoy St. Patrick's Day. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm arrogant because I live in Manhattan. I grew up in Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're so, very we're so <laughs> so. I kind of look when you talk about Brooklyn. I go like, oh, Brooklyn. I lived in Brooklyn. Yeah, I go like oh, Brooklyn. Okay, yeah. What part of Brooklyn were you in? 
I was in Williamsburg, and then oh, I, yeah. I had to move out because my friend, girl, got engaged, and uh, he was going to give me the apartment, but the landlord didn't want to do repairs to the bathroom, he didn't want to raise my rent, and then he had to come back because his future wife was sub illegally supplementing the apartment. Mm. So I saw, so my brother-in-law had a place in uh, East New York. Do not go to East New York. And, East New uh, York. And uh, Brownsville. It was so funny because the first time I was there, I, said, I had to get up early because I had to beat the, the crowd on the subway. Because usually on Bedford, it's like a madhouse. It's like you, yeah. you, you're like in New Delhi. You have to really time yourself. Yeah, and now Bedford and, and, and Williamsburg is more expensive than Lower East Side. Yeah. More expensive than a lot of downtown Manhattan. And, and I didn't mind living there because he, provide, he had a nice, wonderful... Basement apartment with all the an an anemones. You know, yeah. he had the bathroom, kitchen, everything tonight. No windows, but I left to the backyard. Classic New York. So, so well, I it's good for you as a photographer. You need yeah, a dark. Oh, yeah, room. I had my dog. Throw the yet. red light up. And yeah, no, go. no. At once, it, but the thing is that to get to enter the the apartment, you have to go to his business. He he mm. ran a, a mobile phone store. I like that. That reminds me of that one. Like, um, there's a, some show where this uh, detective has his office like in the back of a nail salon. Yeah. And he goes back there, and he's always getting there yelling at him for drinking the cucumber water. And the <laughs> what was that? I can't remember. I don't know, but... Does that ring a bell? That's funny. It's hitting me right now. Is yeah. that Florida Man? Something. No, I don't think so. No, but, but I know that show. We'll yeah. have to look that up. So totally. I lived there for almost eight months, but I was ha dealing with people trying to break in by the back entrance. Yeah, yikes. So then I eventually they broke in and had a home invasion. I was And then you're like... Forget this. I'm going back to Manhattan. No, I, 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 <laughs> These criminals it, in Brooklyn. It, it, I got to get it, out of it, here. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a brave man, but it's kind of interesting that I didn't freak out because they pointed two guns at my face. Oh, oh man. They duct taped me in my underwear. What? What? Yeah. They duct taped you up? Okay, this this got the story got a little more interesting. Yeah. What's so, going on here? So what happened is that uh, sometimes when the wind blows through the gate of the backyard area, the, that little door that enters to the gate opens up. Yeah. And I would shut it down. So this time around, I woke up here, here the dog. So I said, oh, damn it. I get up when I'm half, half awake in my underwear. Mm -hmm. I grabbed the door to shut it down. You see a barrel of a gun. And I said, motherfucker. <laughs> and I got pissed off at my brother in law because I told him, can you put a hook on the door? Right. Please put a hook because, on because the door. Because at, at least if I could be able to hook the thing. Like I, a latch. I could get out. Yeah. Or hit, or hit the fucking guy with a bat and right. make him drop the gun. But either way, two guys came up. They they put me back there. They duct taped me. Holy shit! They, they clicked the gun on my forehead. They're gonna kill me. If they I clicked it. Yeah, they told me they he, dry fired it at you. No, no. They went, you hear this? The sound of the gun. I don't know. Like he kicked the holy like, shit. Clock in the hammer. Yeah, clock, yeah, clock the hammer. Whatever. So I'm laying there. I said, well, I'm and you're dead. just chilling. You weren't. You weren't upset. What? <laughs> well, it, it's interesting. I I, I would have been pissing myself. I, I I think people told me. I think what happened is that there's a part of me. I guess that mo. Well, it's fight or flight, right? Yeah, because and if you can't fly, because, then you got to fight. Because I, I knew I, I'm going to either, I'm sorry, I, I figured either I survive or I'm, I'm going to be dead. Yeah. So I said to myself, as long as they don't kick my ass or hurt me, I, I, I'll let them do what, what they want me to do. Right. So they want me to go upstairs to deactivate the alarm so they could get into my brother in law's business. To make a long story short, I could tell they weren't that bright because they were looking through my credit cards, they wanted my PIN number. So I told them, I don't know my PIN number. Which I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have a pin number. So uh, they said, "Well, we're gonna check this credit card. If it doesn't work, you're dead." Yikes! And then I'm just going. I'm like this. Oh, gosh, what the fuck? You know, do do what you have to do. But it's interesting how little things get me anxiety. And that was fine. It, yeah, <laughs> that other, it's weird. Because the other day, I'm, I'm I'm going to buy something. I got one can of I don't know what it was. Uh, oh, peanut butter. And for some reason, there was a little car that was empty, not occupied. So I put the pin. Here's the woman said, "Excuse me, uh, that's my car." I was just oh, yeah. like, trying to get something. And most people would say, "Oh, it's just a can of peanut butter." So I said, "Okay, move away." And she pointed. That's my car right there. I wanted to beat the shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that triggered you. That triggered. I, like, I got traumatized. Like you, you know, I, you know, for fucking peanut butter, you bitch. <laughs> so, so but with these guys. That had a gun in my head. One guy kept on clicking the gun in my face and all that. I bet you wouldn't have been mad at her if she had a gun and was like, you take uh, it out of oh, my yeah, cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. it out. No, no, if she would have pointed a gun at me, I'd probably say, shut up. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, to make it real quick, they had to take me upstairs. So the guy got the gun on my back of my head, and the other guy pointed the gun towards me, and he opened up the door, and he said, if this alarm goes on when I turn this door, you're going to die. I said, 
Oh my god! And I say, I'm like this, guys. They must have duct taped me several times because they, they needed me to move about, so I had to cut the duct tape, oh re-duct tape me. And and, and, and it's a point where where they, I told him to cover my mouth, and he said, "Fuck you, bitch!" And they, they put the blanket over me and said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna suffocate here and die." Right. So anyway, the guy couldn't open the door because the little door had the little knob, got twisted. And he said, I said, guy, you got to turn the knob. I realized they're, they're stupid. <laughs> so we got, the one I thought the, I would have probably died is when they uh, walking up the stairs and I realized the guy had a backpack. So he was messing with the uh, audio camera, security stuff. Uh -huh. That was on the, on the shelf. I said, don't touch that because I don't know if you do that, it might recalibrate the, the alarm. The alarm. Yeah, and yeah. I, I want to know that. And the guy said, yo, stop. The guy went and stepped back and the entire thing lit up. Uh, no. and, and the guy went, what was that? I said, if this guy was a guy just as nervous, my head would have exploded. I would have dropped on the floor. They would have ran out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they said like that. What was that? What was that? Yeah, just like that. Just like that. And, and he says, he's, and he said, the guy said, yo, man, you turn on the lights. And he goes like, don't fuck with me. What the fuck you <laughs> You're like, I'm duct taped. I'm not. Right. So, so, so That's crazy. So, so, so far, I, I said to myself, if they would have um, smacked me around, uh, broke a finger and all that, I my my not lying, I was going to set off the alarm. Yeah. If they would, like, punch me in the face, bust my lip, whole bets are off. No, oh, yeah. You know, then you're going to go psycho mode. Yeah, if you're like, just going to set the alarm off, and they're going to beat the shit out of me, not knock me down a fly stair, or shoot me, whatever. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, nah. And they just ran? No, they, they, they got in and sat me down, and they sat taking all the phones off the shelves and everything. And you could tell they're not too bright. So they start taking the, the lotto tickets. I'm, I want right. to say, it doesn't matter. You take them out. They got to be certified. They have to be, right. They, 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 you report them missing. Yeah, they, they're, yeah, they're, they're blank. They're, they're not going to get anything. Yeah. But anyway, uh, then they took all the stuff downstairs and they stopped breaking up the phones by just taking the phones and leaving the SIM cards and everything else. So I realized I'm not dealing with the bright crew. It got to a point. I said, guys, it gets garbage bags. I want you guys out of here. It's right. like that. <laughs> you can get your stuff you want and just go. That's got to be demoralizing if the guy you duct taped up starts bossing you around. True. No, but I want to go. You guys, you, you guys been in for God knows. They told me. Yeah, it sounded yeah, like a, a long ordeal. Yeah, at least two to three did hours. It, did it influence your artistic practice at all? <laughs> Before you guys leave, put Segway. a camera in my hand. I just want to get a nice shot of you boys <laughs> holding those guns. Yeah, well, they, That well, honestly would be well, an awesome photo. <laughs> though. So, so, so what happened is they, they, what, they're going to take my camera. They're going to take my supplies. Yeah. I had one of my paintings there, and the guy says, nice painting. He says, thank you. <laughs> oh, nice. There you go. So, oh, I had something like that happen to me where I was, um, I had a, a sculpture that I loved that my father yeah. hated. Like, um, my dad was always really supportive. My parents were, like, oh, I'm almost overly supportive of me doing anything, like, artistic. And I had this sculpture that I made out of, like, lost wax process and all these strips and stuff. I thought it was super cool, and the technique I made, it was innovative. And I go to my dad. I'm like, what do you think of this? He goes... You should melt that shit down for the money. It's terrible. <laughs> oh my and I'm like, oh, but I liked it. Yeah. And I had it in the trunk of my uh, girlfriend's car in Oakland. And like a crackhead stole the car for like a day and or two and then brought it back like with like bologna wrappers and condom wrappers and cigarettes oh. in it. It was like living in it for a while. And I went to go check the back to see if the sculpture was still there. And it was gone. And I thought to myself, well, at least somebody liked the sculpture. And then I realized we're, we live a block away from a metal recycling facility. Uh, There's no way they yeah, like the sculpture. I, I had something stolen from me uh, many moons ago. When I was a kid, my dad came home and he found this, this rock. It was like a big, it looked like a dinosaur egg or an ostrich egg. And he gave it to me. He's like, this is a dinosaur egg. I was like, oh, wow. We <laughs> held on to this rock for years, right? Wait, wait, this in Brooklyn? You live in Queens? I, I grew up in Orange County, New York, Rockland County oh, okay. in Orange County. So he gave me the rock. Fast dinosaur forward egg. a few years ago, I had like this little thing in front of my building with some plants and I had that rock yeah. in there. There you go. Someone stole my fucking rock. They stole the rock. I mean, how can you live in a day and age where you can't even fucking protect your own rocks? Your rock gets stolen. <laughs> and it hurt my feelings, man. Yeah, that was York, my dad's dinosaur. Your art's going to get stolen. Your stuff's going to get stolen. Unfucking believable So, so I need, let me just finish the story real yeah. quick. They, uh, the guy, once I opened up the upstairs to let them in, the, one of the guys who were always intimidating with the gun. Like he pointed a gun at me. He said, you, had, you ever had a gun pointed at you before? And I said, yeah, about five minutes ago. But yeah. I, yeah. I took quiet because I was saying some things they didn't like. So the guy stayed, lay in bed, and he put the gun on my forehead like that. Yeah. And he, he wanted to get a reaction from me, and I said, it's going to go, this is it. 
So I had my little fish tank there, and my turtle. They just looked at that. I said, that's going to be it. It's going to be it. Wow. Then he left, and they tied me up again. They ran out of uh, masking tape, so Wait. they tied me up with my, with my laces my, for my shoes. Oh, Lord. So I stood there, and then um, they left. And then the guy who was over tipping there, he came back and stared at me for a while. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to get ready to get blown up, shot somewhere, or get yeah. beat up. And he turned around and took my phone from my roommate smashed it yeah. so the individual's fate looked at me for a while and then he uh broke my phone and he, and he left so next you know once i heard the door lock i said to myself boy what a night so yeah that's so what, what did they what did they get away with they eventually? took they took a bag of phones that he took out of the boxes with the, they can't function they, they left all the sim cards on the floor what a bunch of dumb and, and then they uh, took a lot of tickets they they were supposed to take my camera stuff but they left it there i guess they was going huh. to get out and then um, I hopped over to the kitchen, took a knife, cut things up, called yeah, the cops. Yeah. The cops came over, and then within 15 minutes, they were caught. Wow. Oh. So, nice. I, so I went, I went to uh, the grand jury, explained what happened, and, I, and, he, and he took a, a plea. So they are supposed to do five years. Now, the guy who liked my painting, he was already on parole, uh, and he was taking graphic works. He's got longer. So he got to make up for what he did. I wonder if he is doing the... Any art in jail? He's an art lover. I have no idea. You know, jailhouse art is like so. Really so popular. my brother all told me, "Do you want to put a new door to it?" Nah, I don't think I want to come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm going back to Manhattan. I'm going back to Manhattan. Yeah, but I, I am a Manhattanite. I love Manhattan. I do too. I, you know, I really do. Like when I first got here, like I said, I thought, like I said last episode, I thought it was for yuppie scum, and the Brooklyn was the coolest. And I feel like it's totally the opposite now. Like Williamsburg is where all the trust fund yeah. babies live now. Um, people in Manhattan and Bushwick, are working and Bushwick people in Manhattan are doing stuff and have like you know they're, they're, there's a lot of activity here the, the, only, thing, the only thing I regret is that uh, Brooklyn has some wonderful music venues but yes. I, being 65 <laughs> I, I just don't want to get up you know and take the train back or pay a hundred dollars well I, I totally scuba. became one of those people who was like when I lived in Bushwick yeah. I lived off Myrtle Broadway if which is like five minutes to yeah. Lower East Side yeah. and I would be so pissed when like my friends from Lower East Side wouldn't come over for stuff at my apartment it was at a big apartment I was having cool parties and they didn't want to cross the water and then as soon as I moved to New, uh, Manhattan and my Brooklyn friends started inviting me to stuff in Brooklyn I, I just turned into one of those people immediately I was like I don't want to go Cross the water. What what is it? The psychological thing about crossing the water. How much? Sure. I'll go all the way uptown. It is. I think I, I won't go across the water. I I be honest with you. I I think uh, growing up in Manhattan, especially in Alphabet Street, East Village, and all that, I experienced so many things. Yeah. And there's a bit of an arrogant attitude about it. Yeah. So this isn't Manhattan. This yeah. is this is when they call a city, they talk about Manhattan, not yeah. Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the respect, Staten Island. Right. Right. But they're not talking about Brooklyn. But Brooklyn has a wonderful social yeah, life. Brooklyn's huge. The promise. And if I was in my twenties, it'd be a different story. Right now, I'm like you know, I'm in my underwear by ten o'clock and watching the murder mystery. So I'm, yeah. I, oh, I, I, I remember this one <laughs> of these like uh, on the street interviewer guys was doing this one. Where he's like, he's going up to people in Manhattan and being like. How does it feel to be like a, you know, like an elite New York, uh, like some to be elite New York, uh, something insulting, right? And this lady was like, oh, it feels great. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I that's, no, that's me. I have no problem walking into a nice tavern or bar in Upper West Side and all that. Have yeah. a nice, it's got piano bar. Yeah. Wow, well, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Why would you not? Why would you have a problem? Well, with some it? people. Great. Well, people like going, like going back to the arts. It's like going to a gallery. People are very yeah. intimidated by galleries. Yeah. And uh, I think just walk in there. So, yeah. Sadly, the person there by themselves. Do you have but, any favorites besides Solus, Obviously, do you have any favorite galleries? I like to go down. What I do, I usually walk down uh, Ludlow Street between Houston and uh, Canal. Yeah. And Orchard. Yeah. Ludlow has a lot of nice galleries. Chinatown soups down there still. I love Chinatown yeah. soup. Yeah, you, you, there's a lot of place to eat and all that. I suggest not to go there at night. It's just a madhouse at night. Well, where can people see your work? Uh, we got to follow you on Instagram. Yes, you can watch me at Zombie Heart and NYC. Do you have a website or anything else? Do no, you that's about Instagram it. Now? I'm very exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah. I'm like, a, what's the guy who does that? A graffiti stuff? Banks, Banksy? Banksy? I want to be Banksy. You, you want to be Banksy? You have to find me. You do I have to, to blur your face out for this? No, no, no. no. You, <laughs> if they want to see, give you that scary you, voice. You, or, you can contact me at Solar Studio. So All right, yeah. yeah. That's the best way to do it. True. If you want to see, we just licensed uh, some of your work for a film. I so know. That's uh, exciting. Lola Yay. Rock, Lola Rock and Roller. Check out this picture, actually. Before we go, you got to see this. This is kind of typical of David's work. This is from, uh, God, I don't know what year. This is 87, 86, the Wigstock photos. 
Yeah, that was about 87. He yeah. Was doing, you know, so this is the photo that was licensed for the film. Incredible shot from Wake's Up. So and thank he's you for... going to be showing work yeah. next week. That's here. right. Next week here Tuesday. Come by. See April you. 16th. I'm you can collect an original David Vega. Thank Come you. get it. Come get it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank David. you. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. All right. We'll see you all next time. Boobadoo. Have a lovely day. Get out there and take some photos. <laughs>